All right. Well, we have reached the end of the regularly scheduled uh, programming content. And if you'll indulge me for a few more minutes, I know it's been a a wonderful long conversation, but uh, with time dilation, perhaps we'll uh, be able to play around with that perception for the listeners. But um, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to go into the impossible with Dr. Shep Doltman, answering my three patented, thrilling three final questions of existential reality. first question that I ask all my listeners is what would you put in your ethical will, not your material will? So in the Hebrew tradition, which I partake in, uh, there's a document called the Zava'ah, which is an ethical will. And it's meant to convey and articulate an inheritance of wisdom to uh, not your only your biological heirs, but your ideological heirs, which of which there are many. And they're not only for Jews, they're for President Obama made one, and, and you can find them all online. I want to ask you, what would you put in an ethical will uh, encapsulating the wisdom of, you know, kind of the, the, the inheritance that you'd most like to leave to those that come after you? Wow, it's, it's really a wonderful, wonderful question. Um, a few things come to mind. You know, one is... Uh, uh, it sounds a little odd, but you know, don't take no for an answer. I mean, no is always an opportunity, and you can do it in a nice way. Uh, you can do it in an ethical way, but you can always push the boundaries. Mm-hmm. And uh, as, as long as you uh, do it in the right way, a no can be very powerful. So, you know, you, know, you, know, you can't do this. No, I'm going to try to do this anyway. So it's, it's very important to understand that. But the other thing I'd say is, is uh, you know, you know, allowing yourself to depend on others is, is a very important thing if you want to do something really grand. I mean, you can't do everything yourself. And, and uh, believing in and creating an environment for, for other people to do their work is, is a very important legacy. Yeah. So those are the things that I'm thinking of at the moment. Awesome. Okay, thank. That is wonderful. Let us go to the second of the thrilling three final questions. A kind of callback to the progenitor of the name of this podcast, Arthur C. Clarke. You'll find out about why that is in just a bit, but Arthur C. Clarke. Um, uh, in his famous uh, movie that was turned into a movie, right? His book that was turned into a movie, A Space Odyssey. There are these mysterious monoliths that kind of populate uh, the the universe on Earth and on the moon in space, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not really sure what they are. They could be a warning. They could be a weapon. They could be a time capsule, which is the way I like to think about them. And I ask you, if you had a time capsule that would outlive you not past your mortal coil you know years of 120 in the biblical sense uh but if you were able to reach you know out to a billion years not you personally but you could put anything any information whatsoever on a monolith that would last for so long what would it be uh what would it comprise scientifically speaking is is this like a a bit of information that, that yeah. goes in there yeah it would be you could engrave it you could put a, a cd-rom on it you, you could put a correlator tape on it from you could do whatever you want with it it's going to last for a billion years and it's meant to convey what human beings had accomplished not just you maybe specifically but what the human civilization had accomplished uh, to some futuristic alien species <laughs> wow um Well, I, I guess, you know, to, to, I, I would put uh, an image of the light bending around a black hole with the right proportions so that the people many, many billions of years from now would know that we had understood that light bends around a black hole. Because I'm sure that black holes are, are would be understood by alien civilizations to be um, as as crazy as we think they are, and so uh, giving them some understanding that we knew what those were and that we had imaged one, uh, I, I think would, they would look at that and say they had it going on. They knew what was going on. They they accomplished something. All right, all right. Here we go. The final thrilling three, uh, third question, which relates to one of Arthur C. Clarke's famous laws. He had a law that you probably heard, any sufficiently advanced technology 
is indistinguishable from magic. Uh, so you and EHT are performing a type of magic. He also said something that I love to pull out on my department chair from time to time. He said, for every expert, there's an equal and opposite expert. And then he said his third law was the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. That's the origin of the name of this podcast. And so I want to ask you uh, kind of advice to your former self. What mysterious aspect of your life perplexed you as a 20 year old, a 30 year old, uh, and yet eventually provided you with great, great clarity um, and sort of an inciting incident that led to a breakthrough to make you who you are today. So advice to your former self, what, what kind of pushed you into the impossible? Well, I, I guess I, I would say that uh, this realization that failure is okay, that, that you, you really do need to fail in order to, to understand what it is you want to do and how you want to do it and what's possible. I mean, if you're not if you're not failing, then you're you're not testing the boundaries, and, and I think it's hard for people to fail. It's really difficult because we're always told, you know, don't fail, like don't mess up, you know, do this, eat your eat your breakfast, you know, <laughs> you know like, like I failed and I didn't get my breakfast, but 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 in in, in your career, uh, failing is just is so important, and and to embrace that. It's it's antithetical. It's, it's kind of antithetical, but to embrace that um, leads to a lot of very very interesting things. So that's my. Yeah. If I get to go back and talk to myself, I'd say fail more. I always uh, get a, uh, uh, tickled by the fact that you know there's this Google ngram search where you can search on phrases and how often they've been used and the context of different phrases. That if you search the phrase in quotes, uh, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And then you ask, well, what sentence came right before that sentence? And it's always, I failed, I got fired, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I lost this, you know, this prize, you know, whatever. And and because of that, it leads to great growth. And you know, there's there's a saying I forget. Maybe it's a rabbi, maybe it's Yogi Berra. Who knows the difference? And it's uh, you know, there is no success without failure. You really cannot achieve greatness without risking when uh, and that also in, entails failure as part of the success process so shep dolman an incredible interview uh, a really wonderfully vulnerable uh, side of you which uh, will delight uh, my audience but also very technical nerdy and fun uh, which will delight you know the other half of my audience uh, so I, I do want to express my deep gratitude on behalf of myself and my listeners uh, for going into the impossible with yours truly and spending so much of your valuable time on me I, uh, and I want to wish you the best in your success and and uh, offer you our deepest gratitude for opening with your colleagues this phenomenal view of the universe well, thanks very much, Brian. It's been a pleasure.